Hi, this is Edward Awad. This video is part two in a series of four videos on cellular respiration and fermentation. In this video, I will talk about the metabolic pathways involved in the oxidation of glucose. More specifically, I will discuss glycolysis, pyruvate processing, and the citric acid cycle. I will leave out this fourth pathway, which is the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation for another video. In the presence of molecular oxygen, cells produce ATP in a process consisting of four metabolic pathways, glycolysis, pyruvate processing or oxidation, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain or oxidative phosphorylation, also known as chemiosmosis. These pathways are interconnected and each one of them has its own distinctive starting molecule and a specific set of products. ATP is produced at different steps of the aerobic respiration process. Since glucose is oxidized in these metabolic pathways, the electrons lost by glucose are captured by electron carriers, mainly NAD, thus forming NADH. So by the end of the citric acid cycle, glucose is completely oxidized. The reduced form of NAD, or NADH, as well as another electron carrier, FADH2, undergo oxidation in the electron transport chain and this results in the reduction of molecular oxygen and the formation of water. Most of the ATP produced in aerobic respiration, however, results from the redox reactions occurring in the electron transport chain. In eukaryotic cells, glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, while pyruvate processing and the citric acid cycle occur in the matrix of mitochondria. The components of the electron transport chain in chemiosmosis are located in the inner membrane of mitochondria. In prokaryotic cells, glycolysis and the citric acid cycle occur in the cytoplasm, while components of pyruvate processing and the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis are located in the plasma membrane. Glycolysis refers to the lysis or breakdown of a glucose molecule, which is a six carbon sugar, into two molecules of pyruvate, each consisting of a three carbon compound. This breakdown is the end result of 10 reactions that all occur in the cytoplasm. These 10 reactions can be divided into two glycolytic stages. The first is the energy investing stage of glycolysis, and the second is the energy harvesting stage of glycolysis. The energy investing reactions use ATP, while the energy harvesting stage of glycolysis produce ATP. Let's look at the energy investing stage of glycolysis first. You may ask yourself, why is ATP consumed in glycolysis when the purpose to start with is to make ATP? It doesn't sound efficient, right? Well, as you know, all chemical reactions, even spontaneous ones, require some addition of energy to start. It's what we call activation energy. In other words, to start the process of glucose oxidation, we need an initial input of activation energy to kickstart the process. And that is why ATP is initially needed in glycolysis. In the initial reactions of glycolysis, a glucose molecule is phosphorylated by ATP, converted to fructose, phosphorylated again, then split into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P. So the net reaction of the energy investing stage of glycolysis is one glucose, two ATP plus two ATP, gives 2G3P plus 2ADP. In the energy harvesting reactions of glycolysis, each molecule of G3P is first phosphorylated by inorganic phosphate and oxidized into bisphosphoglycerate. The electrons from G3P are picked up by, the, uh, by a molecule of NADP+, which becomes reduced into NADH plus H+. Since two molecules of G3P were produced from one molecule of glucose in the energy investing phase, two molecules of NADH should be produced by this step of glycolysis. This phosphoglycerate is then phosphorylated, its structure rearranged, and the product phosphorylated again to produce pyruvate, which is the final product of glycolysis. The dephosphorylation of the intermediate products in this stage results in the transfer of a phosphate group from a phosphorylated intermediate metabolite to adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, therefore resulting in the formation of ATP molecules. 
This way of making ATP by transferring phosphate groups from a substrate is known as substrate level phosphorylation. So now, can you write the overall or net reaction of the energy harvesting stage of glycolysis? Why don't you pause the video and try to write it down before you resume playing the video? So the net reaction of the energy harvesting stage of glycolysis becomes this. 2G3P plus 2NADP plus plus 4 ADP plus 4 inorganic phosphate give 2 pyruvate, 2 NADH, 2 H plus, and 4 ATP. Pause the video again and try to answer this question. What is the net amount of ATP molecules produced per molecules of glucose in glycolysis? Right. The net amount of ATP molecules produced is two molecules per glucose. Two molecules of ATP were used in the energy investing stage, and four molecules were produced in the energy harvesting stage, making that two net ATP molecules. Let's write the overall reaction of glycolysis. One glucose plus two ADP plus two PI plus two ATP plus give two pyruvate, two ATP, two NADH, and two H pluses. And of course, the net reaction is exergonic, resulting in a delta G of approximately negative 140 kilocalories per mole of glucose. When we look at the change in free energy during glycolysis, we can see that there is an initial increase in the level of free energy corresponding to the energy investing stage, followed by a sharp decrease due to the oxidation of G3P, and further smaller decreases as a result of the the two substrate level phosphorylation reactions in the energy harvesting stage of glycolysis. The second step after glycolysis in aerobic respiration is pyruvate processing, or also called pyruvate oxidation. Pyruvate oxidation occurs on the plasma membrane of prokaryotic cells and in the mitochondrial matrix of eukaryotic cells. In prokaryotic cells, once pyruvate is produced, it is processed by enzymes located on the cytoplasmic side of the plasma membrane, which is in direct contact with the cytoplasm of the cell. In eukaryotic cells, the situation is different. Pyruvate needs first to be transported from the cytoplasm into the mitochondrial matrix, where the machinery for its processing is located. Since pyruvate molecules need to cross two membranes of the mitochondria before they reach the matrix, they require energy to actively transport them into the mitochondria. This process requires the expenditure of approximately one ATP molecule per molecule of pyruvate. Once in the matrix, pyruvate undergoes three processes that are catalyzed by the enzyme complex pyruvate dehydrogenase found on the inner membrane of mitochondria. Pyruvate is decarboxylated, meaning a carbon dioxide component is removed from the molecule then oxidized, and finally converted to acetyl coenzyme A, also known as acetyl-CoA. Electrons lost by one pyruvate molecule are transferred to one molecule of NADP+, resulting in the formation of NADH plus H+. Again, pause the video and take a moment to write the overall reaction of pyruvate processing per molecule of glucose. You got it right. The overall reaction per molecule of glucose is 2 pyruvate, since each glucose molecule results in the formation of two pyruvate molecules in glycolysis, plus 2 NADP plus, plus 2 coenzyme A, give 2 acetyl CoA, 2 NADH, 2 H plus, and 2 CO2. The citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle, occurs in the cytoplasm of prokaryotic cells and in the mitochondrial matrix of eukaryotic cells. The citric acid cycle consists of eight enzyme-catalyzed reactions. The starting point is the reaction in which the acetyl moiety in acetyl-CoA, which consists of two carbon compound, combines with oxaloacetate, which is a four-carbon carboxylic acid compound, to yield a six carbon carboxylic acid known as citric acid or citrate. 
In the remaining seven reactions, the intermediate metabolites are oxidized, resulting in the formation of NADH, NFADH2. Some metabolites also undergo decarboxylation or the removal of carbon dioxide. Reaction 5 is coupled to a substrate level phosphorylation reaction resulting in the formation of 1-GTP, which is similar to ATP, and in some cases, in some cells, converted to ATP. And finally, oxaloacetate is regenerated, which would allow the cycle to repeat when new acetyl-CoA molecules are fed into the cycle. Why don't you pause the video again and write the overall yield of the Krebs cycle for one molecule of glucose? So feeding the cycle with one molecule of acetyl-CoA and allowing the cycle to turn one full circle, the following molecule will be produced. 3-NADH, 1-FADH2, 1-ATP or GTP, and two CO2 molecules. Since one molecule of glucose gives two molecules of acetyl-CoA, then the net yield per molecule of glucose should be multiplied by two. What would be the total yield of glucose oxidation from the combined pathways of glycolysis, pyruvate processing, and the citric acid cycle? You can pause the video to do the tally if you want. The yield is 10-ADH, 2-FADH2, 6-CO2, 6-ATP, or 4-ATP net, and the overall reaction results in a negative change of free energy equivalent to approximately 686 kilocalories per mole of glucose.